Hi! Everybody! Thanks for coming to the Trouble Limit Theater production of Frankenstein! Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous. It's a... It's a really scary show. You get, you get the funniest looks from people when you tell them, you know, they ask you what you do and you say, I'm a, I'm a puppeteer, and then they kind of look at you like, okay, you're either a crazy person or you're, you know, a crazy person. Like that. When they realize that we don't do puppet shows for kids mostly, you know, then it's, then they can actually think of it as just art as opposed to some, you know, something else, whatever, whatever it is that they think motivates people to do this sort of thing. Come. Let us prepare the next subject. Your wife arrives tomorrow. You should go prepare your chambers, not these gruesome puppets. I will attend to the lab. Yes, because I didn't yes, know anybody, I, ran, I sort of randomly Thank met you, this person who was doing a puppet show and having no experience with puppet shows and no real theater experience, I just kind of decided to volunteer because it was something to do and really enjoyed it and turned out to be something that I felt like really spoke to me. We ended up picking Trouble Puppet because it fits so many different aspects of what we do, because our shows, we still do a lot of political shows, we do a lot of satire, we do a lot of what we like to think of as making trouble. Um, and also, the puppets themselves just give us a lot of trouble, and they're hard to make, and they're hard to deal with, and they're hard to maintain, and they're troublesome. This can get very stressful, particularly when you're using a playboard that's this tall, which is low for a playboard, but even so, the puppet's head is as high as your own. You have to keep your arm up that high. It can get very, very tiring. It's knowing what you need to make him need to do to make him look realistic while at the same time you know say i have to have his arm up i i know i not to do that like i just did well the thing that i love the most about trouble puppet is like rachel said they're very daring also uh, they use boon raku puppetry which is where you have multiple people on one puppet which gives you so much more realism and freedom in the puppetry Bunraku originates in Japan. I had never seen it done in America. Um, but I think one of the reasons it's a draw, especially for a town like Austin, is just because the movement is so visually captivating of um, just kind of seeing these inanimate things move seemingly on their own because it's really easy to forget that we're back there. I am a stay-at-home mom, don't really do much special, go to karaoke every now and then. You know, I like being on stage but had never done anything like this before and my friend called me, hey, there's these auditions. It'd be fun and next thing I know, I'm a puppeteer. Now as I understand it, the doctors take this stuff, these bits and pieces, and make sort of a stew. You know, I, I grew up on the Muppets. I mean, there you go, right? Uh, you spent a lot of time watching Sesame Street as a kid. To, to describe my love for it would be to think about being a kid, because that's really what it's like. I mean, think about being, playing with action figures, you know? That's what it is. You're getting to play with, you know, an action figure in front of, you know, a large crowd of people, and it's it's a blast. See this? This is what you're made of. And there's something um, mesmerizing about watching an inanimate object all of a sudden come to life and and give you a picture that is more clear. Well, it's furthered my obsession with the animation of lifeless objects. I mean, a puppet can be a, a, a rag and a stick. This is, you know, that's all you need. And, and you can make it do amazing things. You can, you can convince people that it's alive, that it has a, a soul. This is a puppet company, but it's also a theater company. And it's just like any other theater company, it's growing and getting bigger and better and uh, better at storytelling and uh, all the technical aspects of the production.
it's constantly changing and evolving and it's always becoming bigger than yourself, than, than what you thought it could be because those people bring that energy and bring life to this work. There's a moment when the very first time that the puppet comes alive in your hands and you feel like you're not in control of it and that you don't need to be in control of it and that you're essentially just there to help and that it's doing what it's doing. But then there's that moment when I'm sitting out front and I get to see them have the moment where the puppet just came to life in their hands and they're not even doing it anymore and they're not even having to work at it because it's just doing it and they're just there as part of it. And that's, I think, the best thing about what we're doing now is getting to see other people have that moment. Become a DocuBlogger. Log on to DocuBloggers.org to share your opinions and story ideas or get out your camera and create your own DocuBlogs.